So, hi everyone. So I am not uh, from a GIS background. I have a programming background. It's been a year I've been doing a lot of GIS stuff. Uh, the problem with the current GIS stack, it's, it's tool based. So if you want to do some analysis, you either have to use QGIS, ArcGIS, or uh, JJSON-IO, or DeckGL, or CapreGL, right? All of these are tools. And to use a tool, you need to have a background in GIS. And you can't really automate uh, your workflow. So if you want to automate your workflow, you have to use a language. And in our case, at Grammar, since we do most of the stuff on Python, uh, that's what uh, we chose to define a workflow. Uh, based on my work on the past one year, we have defined something. We call it Geoflow. It's a process, or so you can say it's a framework that we use internally to define geospatial workflows. Okay. So there are three components to it. First is the language, which is Python. Then second is the tool. In our case, we're using notebooks for coding. So we use Jupyter for that. And the third component is paper mill. Uh, we'll come to paper mill later. But first is Python and Jupyter notebooks. Uh, traditionally, when we write programs, we generally use IDEs. Okay. Uh, the issue with using IDEs in geospatial workflows is um, you uh, geospatial is very visual in nature. So you would like to see the results of the work that you're doing in place. Okay. Uh, so Jupyter Notebook are kind of built for this. There is this concept of literate programming. Um, Jeremy Howard from Fast AI has been speaking a lot about it. So it's, it basically means you write your code, see your output, test your code, productionize it, everything in the notebook. Your documentation is in the notebook. Your code is in the notebook. Your production API is in the notebook. Your ETL pipeline is in the notebook. So Geoflow is kind of inspired by it like, um, a bit through literal programming terms that is set up by Jeremy Howard and a bit uh, from the inspiration that we have from the works that we have done in Gramna. So uh, let's say uh, you want to read a GeoJSON file and you want to visualize it. Okay, It's pretty simple. You use the GeoPandas library that Sumit just introduced. You do a GeoPandas read file and then show it. And then using Notebook, you could visualize it in the same place. Uh, similarly, if you want to do, if you want to read raster data, let's say you want to read read rate population of the world data, which is available to us as raster, we can read it using raster video. Again, we can plot it along with the vector data in the notebook, and you'll have the output. So here, I'm basically plotting it for a city called Fort Portal in Uganda, and the heat map typically shows you how the population distribution looks like. The uh, more red it is, the higher the population, the greener it is, the lower the population. You can do it in building footprint and other data sets. So I just want to show you an example. So I use OpenStreetMap to load uh, the building footprint available for for portal, and then I'm plotting it on the vector layer again. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is Jupyter notebooks are pretty useful because you could evaluate a code and visualize your result then and there. You don't really have to store it as an image and later on go and visualize it. You can execute the code and visualize the output then and there. And that's super helpful in a geospatial workflow. So this is good. Like uh, notebooks are great. You run your code, you get your output. It helps you to visualize and you build a, a workflow, like an end-to-end -end workflow for some pipeline that you're trying to build. Now, what are demerits of Jupyter Notebook? Uh, one demerit that I could think of is uh, notebooks have to be executed sequentially. Okay, So you have to run one cell after another. Uh, and you have to do it for all the cells that are there to run end to end workflow. Now that's tough. Let's say you define an end to end workflow and you need to repeat it for 10 other cities or 10 other geographies that you are building the workflow for. Uh, you then have to create 10 such notebooks and for each of the notebooks you have to execute the cell. Uh, that's difficult, time consuming, not repeatable, and we don't like it. Second component is you want to parameterize notebooks most of the time. So when you say parameterize, let's say you are running a workflow. For example, let's say we are working code and we have some data coming in and it runs through the notebook and then we have a web application that runs through the notebook. And I want my data to be updated almost every four to six hour once. I don't have to manually go and execute the notebook. I want the notebook to be executed manually or automatically and then update my dashboard based on that. So here comes paper mill. Okay, so paper mill allows you to parameterize notebooks. So when I say parameterize notebook, what you could do is in 
the GIFs that you're currently seeing on the screen. Uh, you could specify a series of variables that you want to parameterize. Here you can see the first cell. I'm uh, parameterizing the region name. What is the UTM coordinate of the place and which pipeline you want to run. Once I select the cell on the left hand side in Jupyter Lab, when I click on settings, uh, it will allow me to add tags to the cell. Okay, so you can add a tag called parameters. Once we add um, the tag called parameter to the cell, then this cell becomes parameterized cell for you. You could programmatically change this cell. Okay, so once you have done that, then you could define a configuration.json file. Okay, so in our case, let's say I want to repeat my workflow with two cities. I want to run it for Fort Portal in Uganda and also Entebbe uh, in the same country. Okay, so I want to run it for two cities, but I don't want to rerun all my cells. So I specify it to the config.json file, then I could use PaperMe to automate my workflow. So PaperMe will then go execute my notebook for each of these parameters. And then I would have two different notebooks. I don't have to rerun my cell, but I can later on come back and see how the visualization look. So this has two advantages. First is uh, you are basically creating your entire ATL pipeline inside notebooks. Second, uh, all the visuals are in place. So later on, when you come back to the notebook, you can see the executed code and looking at the executed code is super helpful because uh, you know what is happening and where it is happening. So if there is a bug in the code, you can just change that particular cell, read on the notebook and then it's fixed pretty easily. You don't really have to debug it again and again. So this is something that we, we personally have used in Grammar and we find it like super useful.